Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the President and Chief Operating Officer for Nintendo of America, Reggie fils -Aimé. Good morning. When I last talked to you from an E3 stage, I closed by saying that we at Nintendo were pleased, but not close to being satisfied. With Animal Crossing on its way to Wii by the end of this year, complete with the Wii Speak option, of course we're pleased. And in a larger sense, we're even more pleased with our marketplace momentum. After all, in May, according to the NPD data, lifetime sales in the U.S. for Wii hardware reached 10 million systems. DS surpassed 20 million. And the sales of these two game devices alone now combine to represent more than $5 billion of retail just in the U.S. But despite all this, we're no closer to being satisfied. That's because there are still tens of millions of people around the world ready to get into the game that we all love. And at the same time, there are millions of us veteran gamers hungry for what's next. At Nintendo, we want to fill both those needs. Let me begin with a little marketplace perspective, and I know, I promise, I'll keep this short. Here are lifetime global hardware unit sales for the last iteration of each major platform. The biggest bar belongs to Nintendo DS. By the end of our current fiscal year, next March, we expect that total DS worldwide sales will grow to almost 100 million systems. Focusing on DS here in America, annual sales have ramped up each year. Now, some people still cling to previous expectations for product cycles, and consequently thought that 2007 would be the peak year for DS. However, it still represents better than two out of every three handhelds sold here in America. And so far, in 2008, DS sales here in the U.S. are running another 12% ahead of last year's record. Hardware sales are always driven by key software franchises. And this spring, that key franchise was Pokemon. Sales of the companion Mystery Dungeon series sold through more than 600,000 copies in just six weeks. This grows lifetime total sales for all Pokemon titles to 180 million. The arrival of games like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games have pushed total DS software sales in America 29% ahead of last year. Now, later this week, we believe the June NPD data may show that the back and forth battle between Wii and DS as America's best-selling game system may have shifted for the moment back to DS. In no small part, it's due to those evergreen titles Mr. Awada mentioned. We began running a TV campaign in May targeting females featuring celebrity endorsements. Within weeks, unit sales for titles like the Brain Age games, Nintendogs, Super Mario Brothers at least double. To repeat, there seems to be an unlimited number of people out there just looking for a way to get into our game. For we, the sales trajectory is climbing even steeper. This chart shows comparative system sales. The blue bars represent the first 12 months of the market, and the yellow bars represent sales from year one through month 19. 
It's here, beyond the realm of the early adopters, where we demonstrate how its historic sales pace is actually increasing. When those June NPD numbers are released on Thursday, we will not be surprised if we become the best-selling console in this generation in America, just as it already has on a worldwide basis. Now, you all know about the popularity of Wii hardware, but perhaps not as widely appreciated is the story for Wii software. It's exactly the same. Again, no system has ever sold more games during its first 19 months of availability. And again, the sales advantage after year one continues to grow. It's no secret that Nintendo internally approached game development for Wii on two different fronts. On one hand, we made sure we leveraged our well-known stable of stars early in the generation to satisfy and reassure veteran gamers. But at the same time, we also created new titles, beginning with Wii Sports and continuing with Wii Fit that made even confirmed non-gamers stand up and take notice. But now a new dynamic is emerging. Having passed a year and a half in the market, our creative third-party partners are finding success with Wii. To date, 19 different third-party games on Wii have exceeded sales of 400,000 units in America alone. And those titles come from 11 different publishers. The wonderful thing about this trend is that there are almost as many strategies on how to attack Wii development as there are different developers and publishers making those decisions. For example, you might ask if this is the platform that will be dominated by new kinds of casual games. Or is this the place to use the unique forms of Wii interface to freshen up even the most legendary IP? Or is this the ideal spot for new franchises with obvious core appeal that set new standards for a genre? Well, the correct answer is all of the above. The Wii library continues to grow far faster than other current consoles. And there'll be dozens and dozens of new titles arriving in the coming months. The truth is, there's no way today we can give you even a quick glimpse of everything that's on its way. So instead, we've chosen to limit our preview to just three new games that take very different approaches to the interface options available on Wii. Take a look.